All right, let's talk about something really important today, taking back control. I mean, we live in a world where we're just drowning in subscriptions and cloud services, right? But what if you could carve out your own little corner of the internet, run it yourself from your own home? Well, you can. It's time we talked about self-hosting. So, let's just kick things off with a simple question. When you upload your photos, stream your music, or save a password, who's actually in charge of all that data? The truth is, your entire digital life is sitting on someone else's computer in a massive data center somewhere. It's governed by their terms of service, their privacy policies, and yeah, their ever-increasing monthly fees. But what if there was another way? Well, there is, and it's called self-hosting. The idea is actually pretty simple. You run your own services on your own computers in your own home. You stop being a digital tenant, renting space from these giant corporations, and you become the landlord. And that really is the core philosophy behind the whole thing. Your data, your rules. It's that simple. When you're the one running the server, your information is completely and totally under your control. You decide what happens to it. You decide who gets to see it, no one else. Now, when I say server, you're probably picturing a huge, noisy, heat-blasting server rack bolted to the floor in a garage. Uh, nope, forget all that. The hero of our story today is something, well, something much, much smaller. Let me introduce you to the Raspberry Pi. So why is this little credit card sized computer so perfect for this job? Well, first off, it's tiny. You can tuck it away behind your TV or on a bookshelf and you'll never even see it. And because it's fanless by design, it is completely, utterly silent. You'll literally forget it's even on. And on top of all that, it barely uses any electricity, which means you can keep your data private without it costing you a fortune. And when I say it's power efficient, I'm really not kidding. A Raspberry Pi running 24 hours a day, seven days a week can pull less than three watts of power. That is just unbelievably low. It's less than most phone chargers use. Just to put that number in perspective, right? If you try to use an old desktop computer as a server, you could easily be looking at four or 500 watts of power drop. That's a serious chunk of change on your electricity bill over a year. The Pi's impact? It's basically a rounding error. It's a hobby that almost pays for itself. So we've got our tiny, silent, super efficient server all ready to go. Now for the really fun part. What can you actually do with it? Well, this is where it gets exciting. You can essentially build your own private versions of all the online services you're probably already using every single day. Let's kick off with a real crowd pleaser, getting rid of ads. And I don't just mean in your web browser. I mean killing them on every single device connected to your home network. Your phone, your smart TV, your tablets, everything becomes ad-free. So how does this magic work? Well, tools like PyHole and AdGuard Home act as a sort of bouncer for your entire network's internet traffic. When any device tries to connect to a known ad or tracking server, it just gets blocked, flat out denied. And the absolute best part, you don't have to install any software on your phone or your computer. It just works, silently cleaning up the web and giving you a fascinating look at what all your so-called smart devices are really up to. All right, next up, are you tired of that feeling of scrolling through five different streaming apps trying to find that one movie you want to watch? What if you could build your own personal Netflix stocked with your own media collection? This is where amazing software like Jellyfin or Plex comes in. You point them at your collection of movies, TV shows, and music, and they organize it all into a beautiful, easy-to-use library. You can then stream it to literally any device you own, whether you're at home or on the go. And yeah, a modern Raspberry Pi 4 is plenty powerful enough to stream high-quality 4K video across your network without even breaking a sweat. Let's talk about something incredibly important, your digital security. Specifically, your passwords. Instead of blindly trusting a third-party company with the keys to your entire digital kingdom, you can take full control by hosting your very own password manager. There's this fantastic open-source project called Vault Warden. It's a lightweight version of the Bitwarden server, and it gives you all the features you'd expect. A super secure vault, apps for all your devices, and seamless syncing. But here's the crucial difference. The server that's storing your encrypted password vault isn't in some far-off data center. It's sitting in your house, on your Pi. You are in complete, total command. But look, ad blocking, media streaming, and managing passwords, that's really just scratching the surface. It's just the beginning. There is a massive, and I mean massive, universe of free open source applications out there just waiting for you to install and play with. Seriously, the list just goes on forever. 
You can replace Google Drive with an app called Nextcloud. You can build a truly private smart home with Home Assistant. You can host your own code repositories with Gitia. You can build a beautiful dashboard with Homer to get to all your services. Honestly, whatever you can imagine, there's probably a self-hosted app out there for it. Okay, now I know what you might be thinking. This all sounds a little bit complicated, right? Managing dozens of different apps on one tiny computer? Well, the good news is the self-hosting community has built some absolutely incredible tools that make this whole process surprisingly straightforward. The magic ingredient that makes most of this possible is a tool called Docker. The best way to think about it is that it lets you put each application into its own tidy little box or container. Everything the app needs to run, all its code, all its settings, is packed up inside that box. This is a total game changer because it means you can run tons of different apps side by side without them ever conflicting with one another. So the basic workflow from a high level looks something like this. First, you install a basic operating system on your Raspberry Pi. Then you install Docker. And from that point on, you just start running all these amazing applications as containers, often with just a few simple commands. And the final piece of this puzzle is something called a reverse proxy. Think of it like a really clever receptionist or a secure front door for all your applications. It sits at the very front, and when a request comes in, it looks at it and says, ah, you're looking for the media server, right this way, or you need the password manager, that's down this hall. It directs all the traffic to the right container, and it also handles all the important security stuff, like encryption to make sure everything is locked down tight. You know, getting started with self-hosting isn't really just about setting up a few services and calling it a day. It's about starting a new hobby. It's a journey of learning and tinkering and yes, sometimes breaking things and figuring out how to fix them. It's an incredibly empowering process that teaches you some really viable skills. So let's just bring it all home. By self-hosting on a tiny computer, what do you really get? Well, you regain total control of your data and your services. You dramatically enhance your privacy by cutting third-party companies out of the loop. You can save actual real money by getting rid of those subscription fees. And maybe most importantly, you pick up a fascinating and genuinely rewarding new hobby. So I'll leave you with this thought to chew on. Just for a moment, forget about what all the big tech companies want you to use. If you had the power to build your very own personal cloud tailored exactly to what you need, what would you have it run? What's the first thing you'd build? It's something to think about.